Have you ever wondered which store you're getting a better deal from? Yeah? Would you, able, would you be able to figure it out? You think so? Hmm? Yeah? There are some supermarkets that under the price, they give us like a little guide that says the unit rate. Have you ever heard that word, unit rate? No? Most of the time when you buy things, you buy them with several. You don't just buy one. You buy a package usually that has several items. Let's talk about, how about a, a sports drink package? that you have what, like how many? Or mixed goodies. Or mixed goodies. Or anyone else that you trail think mix. of. Huh? Trail mix. Yeah. yeah, trail mix. They come in like the packages, several in a box, and you want to find out if you're getting a better deal. Like canned sodas. Or canned sodas. Okay, well, some, like I was saying before, some of the supermarkets have a little label that say what the unit rate is. Okay, so pretty much we're going to learn a little bit about how you can tell if your parents are getting a better deal if they shop maybe at a wholesale club or at a local supermarket. But not only that, have you ever wondered maybe if you're on a track team at school and who's the faster runner depending on how many laps you run? Okay, I bet you guys are really good and you can tell automatically just by watching the race you can tell who the faster runner is, right? How many of you are fast? Yeah? Okay, now I'm gonna ask this question. How many of you are fast short distance? How many of you are fast long distance? Okay, did you see the difference there? So maybe over time, over a certain amount of distance, you know, maybe Brit and, and Sergio, you might win the race. But if it's a short distance, maybe Lazaro will win the race, okay? So we're going to start learning about this and learning about unit rate and ratios. My main objective when I was teaching the lesson comparing ratios, I really wanted the students to understand how to compare ratios. I wanted them to be able to know how to use the correct mathematical vocabulary, not simply by giving them a definition for ratio, but linking it to real world. And that's why I incorporated the kids when I was trying to teach them a ratio. And you can tell automatically just by watching the race, you can tell who the faster runner is, right? How many of you are fast? Yeah? Okay, now I'm gonna ask this question. How many of you are fast short distance? How many of you are fast long distance? Okay, did you see the difference there? So maybe over time, over a certain amount of distance, you know, maybe Brit and, and Sergio, you might win the race. But if it's a short distance, maybe Lazaro will win the race, okay? So we're gonna start learning about this and learning about unit rate and ratios. I'm gonna start off by giving you a worksheet. I want you to analyze one of the problems together. David, can you read that for me, please? Ariel can run four laps in 12 minutes. Susan can run three laps in nine minutes. Who is the faster? Fastest runner. Okay, let's really understand what the problem is asking. What is the problem actually asking, Allie? Um, who's the faster runner? Who's the faster Between um, Ariel and Suzanne. Very good, very good. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to discuss this problem with your group members, okay? Take a minute to figure out to solve it, and then share with your group members how you solved it. Let's take a few minutes, three or four minutes, to solve that problem together. I really do believe in cooperative groups. It gives me the opportunity to walk around, to informally assess the students, and that way I can see where to go next, or perhaps maybe differentiate the instruction at that time based on the information that I'm gathering as I walk around. It's very important to provide different varieties and opportunities for students to interact with each other. I have seen some very unique ideas come out and I'm going to ask for your group to pick a member to explain which way you chose to answer this question. Let's see if you came up with the right answer. Uh, who would like to go first? 
Next group, discuss. You want to be the speaker for your group? Sure. You guys okay with that? Great. Go. Show me, explain to the class what your group decided to do. Well, the way I would figure it out is I would take the two numbers. A little louder, Nick. For, what I would do, I would take the two numbers for Ariel, which is 4 and 12. Nice job. Excellent. You did a great job, this group. Okay, we're going to call another group up. Thank you for participating, Nick. We're going to call up Sergio's group. And let me ask you, is your method the same way? Did you solve it that way? No. I'm really curious. Let's see what method you chose. You, you all discussed it, right? You came up with a method. It is the same because, like, if one lap in three minutes. So, Ariel. Ran four laps and four laps will be 12 minutes. Wow, very interesting. So if Susan ran one more lap, she would have the same amount as Ariel. Very interesting. You've identified a pattern. Look. I also think it's very important to do independent work so that I can assess formally the student trying to complete one of the problems and attempt the problem and see what steps they're taking and if my instruction assisted in that process to solve the problem. For every one lap, three minutes. Notice that on Sergio's work, as well as Nick's group's work and Sergio's group, again, it came up. Boys and girls, that's unit rate. You've just figured out what one lap is, three minutes. So let's bring it back to the grocery store and the supermarket. You divided here. You did a pattern here. If you're buying paper towels in bulk, even in the same supermarket, would it be ideal to divide maybe the price of three paper towels by three to find out what one is worth? Or should you buy the package of 12 paper towels? How do you think you can figure out, now that you know this information, what the better deal is? What would you do, Britt? Divide. Could divide, fantastic. And then how would you know which one is the better deal? Because whatever answer that you get, when you divide. What are you looking for? The, the more for less. M would, yeah, more for less. That's what you're looking for. If you're a good consumer and you want to save money, you want more product for less price. My main objective when I was teaching the lesson comparing ratios, I really wanted the students to understand how to compare ratios. I wanted them to be able to know how to use the correct mathematical vocabulary, not simply by giving them a definition for ratio, but linking it to real world. And that's why I incorporated the kids when I was trying to teach them a ratio. Please look at the groups you're standing in. How, did, how are you divided? By what? How did I divide you? Gender. By gender, boys and girls. How many girls are here? Five. How many boys? Five. Five. So what is the ratio of boys to girls? If the ratio of one lap is three minutes. What's the ratio of boys to girls? One, one. One, one. Interesting, David. How'd you come up with that? Because I would have thought maybe, who, who can read my mind? What do you think I would have thought? Five, five. Five, five. That's what I would have thought. But why did you say one, one? That's very interesting. Because you simplify it. Simplify it. Five divided by five equals one. Mm -hmm. And that's what you did in that problem. Very good. But I like that vocabulary word you're using, simplify. Interesting, we're gonna talk a little bit more about it. Okay, now let's take a look at your shoes. Now everybody just standing. You can get closer so you can see the shoes over here. Come over here. Come over here, take a look at your shoes. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking. Okay, the ratio I'm gonna come up with here is how many black shoes to blue shoes?
white. Some shoes have black and white. Do you want to count those? Yeah, they contain black but not blue. So. Okay, so let's count them because they don't contain blue. Oh, yeah, okay, fine. Include me. That would be great. Seven black, seven seven black, black shoes, shoes and, and two blue shoes. Okay, so what's the ratio of black shoes to blue shoes? But thank you. Have a seat. Now we got our blood flowing. We can move around a little bit, get energized, and we can move on. Okay, so just to wrap up what you're saying, the shoes, David said seven over two. Is that a good way to write a ratio, you think? Is it acceptable? Yeah, it's acceptable. Very good. I kept saying 7, 2, 2. OK. Now, what's the ratio here in the classroom, teacher to students? How many teachers do you see in this classroom right now? One. To how many students? Nice job. Okay, and that's a ratio as well. Okay, I want you to please look at number two. I want you to discuss it. I want you to feel confident about this. And let's come up with solutions. Read it first on your own, and then get ready to discuss with your partners. Jonathan, I'd like you to explain what you did. Okay, what I did was, and Jill will walk in 20 seconds, six steps, and Jack in five five steps every 25 seconds, um, it comes to the conclusion that when you multiply 25 times 2 equals 50, which then 50 equals 10, 10 steps that Jack will walk. Okay, Jonathan, I'm going to interrupt real quick because you're, you're doing great, but I want you to show it, show the visual part of it. Because I want to see, what, how'd you come up with 50? What did you do? You, you made an assumption that what happens if you write more, you take more steps? What are you doing? Show the class. Okay. Jack, Jack, uh, Jack could walk every five steps, 25 seconds. Okay, so since Jack could walk every 25 seconds, you multiply 25. Very nice job. I like the way you did that. And it will be 15 steps, which Jill and Jack will only walk. Will, it will only walk. Jill will walk 15, and Jack in 50 in 50 seconds will walk uh, 10. Right. So 15, of course, is more than 10. So who's faster? Uh, Jill is faster because it's actually 15 steps he's taking every 50 seconds. And Jack is taking 10 steps every 50 seconds. Very nice job. I like what you did. I like it. Kind of sounding like he uh, combined unit rate with time. Why do you think he chose to increase the time for both of them? Why did he take that method, David? To make them equal the same. So you can compare them equally with the same um, rate. That sounds really good. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, what did he make the same? When I'm looking at this, and um, I see fractions here written, and I see that he labeled things, which is so important in math. Got a label. I see here that he put 50 seconds, and let's see, who, who was this? I noticed that they didn't really have an understanding of ratios when I was walking around and looking at their work. They pretty much knew the steps on how to compare a ratio, but they didn't understand why. They didn't understand why they were increasing the denominator to be able to compare the numerators. They were just going according to what was taught with, to them in previous years. And I feel that I really needed to emphasize that they were comparing ratios based on the information the problem was giving. And 30 here in this fraction, what does it represent? It would represent 10 times 3. 10 times 3. And what did the 10 represent? The, the, um, because we we're putting the ratios in, in um, fractions first. OK. So then, so then to, find which, to find how much, to find which one is more, we would 
rest of the whichever one is left over, we would take the time and actually see which one would have more. The old or the new? Okay. So this is the old hen house, this is the new hen house. But what did yes, you increase? Yes, what what does 30 represent here? What is it? The white eggs? Is it the brown eggs? If you're increasing the amount of eggs, if you're like pretending, you're saying, what would happen if we increase what? Which one did you increase there? You got that. Honestly, I really don't know. Okay. You're doing. I, I just have I just have a way of knowing what to do. So I don't label things. You don't label things. Well, not until the end. Not until the end. Okay. So then, um, yeah, we'll do this. Okay. So, then, so tell me. Continue your problem then. Okay. Teach me your approach. Show me. Okay. All right. So ten times three would be thirty. So do the same thing to the four, which would be four times three, which would be what? So write the 12 as a numerator. Fantastic. I think the kids enjoyed uh, learning. I think they enjoyed participating. And pretty much as a teacher, I fed off of the students and their needs. So since I saw them going towards uh, common denominators, we worked in that direction. So it's very important as a teacher to listen to what the students' responses are and, and move forward from there.